So in some sense, Aquinas thinks that all of the created reality bears the imprint and is in some way the expression of the Holy Trinity. But this is particularly the case with regards to men and angels made in the image of God. Because in human beings and in angels, there's a real distinction of spiritual faculties of intellect and will that reflect somehow imperfectly, but really, a likeness to the eternal Word and the eternal Spirit as the two processions of the Father. However, there's something even more profound that then follows from that, which is that the human person and the angelic person, the angelic community and the human community, are meant to partake in Trinitarian life by grace. We were created, according to Aquinas, in a state of grace, originally both men and angels, and for the life of grace, so that we could, in our intellect and will, participate in, share in, the divine life of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now that doesn't mean we would become the Trinity, we don't become the Trinity. It's not that when we say deification. We're not talking about fusion or confusion. But we're talking about God allowing us through the mystery of grace to be enlightened in our mind by the eternal mystery of the wisdom uh, and word of God and um, elevated in the loves of our heart to uh, participate by charity in the mystery of the uncreated uh, love and life of the Holy Spirit, to savor the love of God that is the Holy Spirit and contemplate the mystery of wisdom that is the uncreated Word of God and in so doing be assimilated in a way to the mystery of the Son and the Spirit so as to have God as our Father, to become close to the Holy Trinity. Now, this is produced by the life of grace in us and Aquinas says when God has created the world, he created it ultimately for spiritual creatures spiritual animals who are human beings and the angelic community so that these communities of personal creatures could commune with the Holy Trinity by grace. That being the case, the creation was created for Trinitarian missions. The idea of Trinitarian missions for Aquinas is the idea that God has sent the Son and the Spirit into the world to enlighten and enliven creatures by grace. Uh, spiritual creatures. So the missions of the Holy Trinity are to these persons that are angelic and human, to the spiritual creatures in reality, to uh, create that bond of grace and uh, invite us into that life. We could call it an ecclesial life of uh, communion with God. The missions can be invisible or visible, and there's the invisible mission of the Word, who has been, as it were, in the world enlightening all angels and men before the time of the Incarnation. And then the visible mission of the Word takes place in and through the Incarnation in view of the deepening enlightenment of the human community. So the Word has been enlightening us by grace in the world so we can share by grace in the participation in Trinitarian life and has become human and visible to manifest that life more perfectly and communicate it through the mystery of the Incarnation, the Passion, the Resurrection. The Holy Spirit is invisibly since, since the foundation of the world into all creatures uh, to indwell in us by love and to enlighten us so that we discover in He who is the Spirit of the Son the mystery of the Word, the mystery of the Father. But he has become visible in the visible mission of the Pentecost and indwells in the church as the uncreated soul of the church, as the, as the primary or, or principal protagonist of the life of the Holy Church of God and as the one who teaches saints to live with God and, uh, by indwelling within them and um, who's active in the souls of the baptized and then encourages people to grow in fidelity, holiness, and sanctity, and independence, so that they can live in knowledge of the Father and the Son and in conformity with the Father and the Son. So the, the visible missions of the Son and the Spirit, you might say, lead us into the, the deeper Trinitarian life, uh, the life that is, in a way, the invisible life of grace, wherein spiritual creatures can be assimilated to the mystery of the Son and the Spirit and live the Trinitarian life. And in so doing, they're bringing the creation to its uh, summit or its original plan of perfection as a creation in which spiritual creatures were created to be plunged into the mystery of the Trinity by grace, uh, a creation that was made in a way for the missions of the Holy Trinity wherein God shares his life with created persons. Mm -hmm.